Welcome back, everybody, to another Appreciating Comic Book Art video. And today, we're going to be looking at David Finch's Monday Night Draw Season 1. Uh, now, this is the third time I've recorded this video, because twice now, <laughs> I forgot to hit record. So I made sure this time I hit the record button. Um, so I have looked at a couple pages of this already before I realized I wasn't recording. So before I could actually say, this is the first time I've looked at this, and you guys are joining in with me. I can't really say that anymore, but most of the book will be the first time that all of us together are viewing this book. But this is a beautiful hardcover, uh, came in very good quality, and I stated before in the, in the videos that did not make the cut because I forgot to record, that uh, I'm not a fan of hardcovers uh, because the spines wear out easy. I think the pages, the glue, everything that goes into like a hardcover, I, I don't like it, especially when you, you pack a lot of pages into it. But this is well done. This is nice. Um it's also a wrap around there. Very awesome, very well done. This also came with this cool uh, postcard. It's not really a postcard, but like this print, this mini print. And I'll say it for the third time, huge fan of David Fincher's work. Uh, the dude is also a fantastic painter as well, and you can see the quality in there. You can also see the quality when we get into the book as well. Uh, we got this really cool Batman sticker as well and this uh, Finch symbol. So very cool uh, little extras. There was also a Finch pin, which I don't know what I did with it. Uh, I had it on me when I opened up the package, but I might have left it somewhere in the other room. But that's dope. We're here for this. This is what we're here for. So here we go. For the third time, let's look at it. Uh, I said before, this is a really cool blank page Finch. I mean, if you ever meet him at a con, you can take this book, get a sketch, which maybe I'll have to try to do that someday. It'd be cool. So, all right. Here we go. Awesome. Awesome art. Beautifully done. Again, quality book. I, I like it. Um, I'm not going to pull on that too much. I mean, it is what it is, but I love this Wolverine here. Uh, I've seen this posted on Instagram before. I hope the full version in is in the book because this is one of my sh favorite shots of Wolverine. The rain is just awesome. Frank Miller style, kind of just white out rain with a black background. So cool. And we start this out with a some really cool paintings of Batman. The dude is just extremely talented. Especially when you get into painting. Like, the painting just... He gets even more in-depth with, like, the muscles. And they become a little bit more realistic. I mean, the dude is just talented. Like, Gargoyle is awesome. And just color choices and everything on this. is well done. Well done. It's a very uh, stoic Batman there. And then uh, there, there's the cover to the book. We said before, the full shot of the cover of the book. Get a little bit into uh, some of the rogues gallery. You got a really wicked looking penguin. I like the monocle there. I think that's what it is. Again, good, nice paintings. Very real. I mean, you take an already uh, well-drawn picture. Look at that face. Of, the two faces. So realistic there. Really cool uh, scarecrow as well. Yeah, I'm I'm really blown away by guys that can they can paint like that, whether it's digital painting or traditional painting. I don't care. It's just, uh, it's really incredible. All right, here we go. Here we go. There's some again, like I don't know if everything that is in this book was on the Monday Night Draw or not. I know this was. This is a Batman Lobo mashup. I really like that. I said this before, um, I really like when David is inked by really good inkers like Bat uh, or uh, Scott Williams, Richard Friend, Jimmy Reyes. It brings his work out in a very, his lines are a lot cleaner, right? When he inks himself, he's a little bit more, a little bit more dirty, I'd say, but uh, if that makes sense to anybody out there. But I like, I like how he's developed his style for inking. Very confident in his line work. I think he inks mostly with pens, which is what I do as well when I ink my own work. This is really cool. I don't know if this is like an homage to uh, like a Frank Miller Batman, but he really pulled off of the detail in this. It's like really hard shadows from white to black. Not a, No rendering out of the shadows. Very well done. And this Bane. Man, look at that. Man, it's so good. Uh, Brett Booth and David Finch are very good at the rubble. 
as well as like the smoke and debris adding energy to a piece. I mean, there's a lot of artists that, that can do it as well, but it really gives motion to a, a 2D, just still, still frame there with everything with the background. It's just simple too, just simple lines, but it adds a lot to the picture. Man, it's a creepy Joker face. Yo, I'm torn. I'm torn by some of the, the people that draw Joker. Uh, I, I feel like he's supposed to look a specific way. And when he doesn't look that way, it's kind of it's kind of hard for me to get into the character. Uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's well done. I'm mean, going to look at the detail in the eyes. All this rendering here with the eyelids, the cracks, it just the insanity. Like, that is just so well done. Uh, some people might think that he's overshadowed, like he dropped, he has a lot of hard drops in his shadows. I personally like it. Um, even his day picks, when he's a character's in the day and he still have hard shadows. I mean, it's it's comic books. For black and white, it looks great. Colors will still kind of balance that out. A little Harley Quinn there. Got some face shots of, I'm assuming, Harley? Does it stay? No, it doesn't stay. And then a Wonder Woman. A lot, you know, Finch, Finch is one of the guys, much like Sylvester, uh, Booth. Uh, these guys can just draw, draw great hair. And it's it's not the easiest to draw hair. You, know, you can over-render hair. You can under-render hair. Uh, drawing uh, black hair is hard, too, because there's so much just solid blacks. So like, where do you put the lines in and make it look uh, like it's got flow to it? You know, and then not just like this... Blah, this, you know, a bunch of just blacks just thrown in there. It's actually got flow and it's got movement to it with the highlights. Ooh, that's badass. Got some uh, Kirby crackle going on. That's really cool seeing this up close and, and personal like this. And I'd say this is, uh, this is slightly bigger than a regular comic book. Let's see, what do I have to compare? Here's a sketch cover I did. I still have to send out to Rick Saylor, who won this the other day, uh, being a member of my channel. But you can see the kind of difference. Slightly oversized uh, than a regular comic book, so you get a little bit, a little bit bigger size here with the with the art. So we can kind of really zoom in here and look at this. Yeah, love it, love it. So far, I highly recommend you get this book. If you didn't get this book, I don't know if you can get this, but I don't, you know, I don't know if he's going to be selling this in retailers or not, but man, look at that too. So good. Just incredible amount of detail there. It might be over detailed for some people. And I get that, but I mean, colors would really bring this out as well, but just, man, if, if you're going to draw something, draw something, right? Put that detail into it. Let's go. Let's go. Look at that. Love it. Very fantasy. Just... I'd love to see that colored. Yeah, Wonder Woman, I think, on this side. Yeah, Wonder Woman. I don't know this character. Playing some DC guys, though, for sure. Very cool, too. Again, I love the shadows, you know. It, some of what the shadows are, I mean, there is a little bit of a cheat when you throw really heavy light sources, and you can really black out a lot of stuff underneath it to save a little bit of time, but it looks cool, you know. All the different shadows you can throw, you know, especially the shadow coming off the horn here, hitting the face, the under under shadow here. It just, it, it, makes, uh, it makes a drawing really appealing to look at, especially in the black and white form. There we go. Is the Trinity? The uh, texture here on anything that's stone or brick or anything like that related is great. Really uh, gives a form and a lifelike to to a non living creature, non living thing. You got kind of like the old school Batman right there with the that's the old symbol. Trunks, a little bit more of the modern uh, Wonder Woman, though. All right, here we go. Some oh, Wonder Woman Wolverine crossover. It's 
pretty cool. Just pencil version here. Now we're getting some pencils. And again, just he does very tight pencils. I mean, he, he pencils like he inks, or he inks like he pencils, whatever you want to say it. Like, everything is very tight. You could really just go off of these pencils right here. You could darken them up, have the colors go right off the pencils that are that tight. Big face shadow Wolverine. There it is. That's what we're talking about. That is just sick. That's one of my favorite drawings ever of Wolverine. The emotion. I mean, everyone loves rain. Though that solid black background, white highlights with the rain, just heavy, heavy rain. Really Frank Miller, like Sin City feel. Let's see if I can black out some of this. Nope. All right. A little bit of a glare, but it's all right. Awesome. Another Wolverine here, a little more painted Wolverine there. You got the Hulk. There you go. There's a homage to the, uh, what was that, Hulk number after Trempy. I can't remember what it was, but this first appearance of Wolverine as he fights the Hulk, Windigo in the background. Cool shot of Gambit. Still one of the coolest X-Men characters, but Marvel characters ever created are Chris Claremont and Jim Lee. I could have done so much more with that character. I think they really kind of messed his character up, especially after the early 90s, in my opinion. Got some uh, female characters there. They have Psylocke in the middle. Is that the White Witch? I don't know. I, I don't think I recognize either of those just off of those alone, but definitely Psylocke. Maybe, again, tell me in the comments who these characters are. That's a cool vision. Ah, nice groundwork. I'm, I'm kind of a... <laughs> you know me, I'm, I'm an artist, obviously. Uh, and I get uh, excited about stuff like this. You know, like, most people would be looking at the, the whole vision, the pose, the drawing, the rendering... I'm looking at the ground, the crackle on, on this, this pavement and the, the smoke in the background. That's what I really like. This cool Black Panther, Chad, Chaswick, Chaswick Bowman, Ch Chadwick, Chadwick. I can't remember how you pronounce his name, but yeah, it's a nice tribute there. Very hard to draw realistic faces, but that's pretty well done. Pretty well done. Rest in peace. All around, uh, from all accounts, was a really good dude. He was a good actor. Taken way before his time. Oh, man. this Doing this, uh, doing this, this scale, what's it called? What is it? Uh, ah, might have my mind blanking on what the actual term for this is called. But this is hard as hell. So much detail, so much time to just do this and make them look like kind of even, overlapping each other. It's uh, why a lot of artists back in the day would just kind of do uh, a few lines here there to symbolize that that's what it was chainmail is all i can think of i don't know if that's the right terminology for it but again great background here just a lot of detail even though it's kind of faded in they don't have to show he doesn't show every single thing but you get a sense of where he's at and what he's doing and getting a very nice uh painted version of captain america there And we're like halfway through this book. This is awesome. This is a great book, guys. Go out and get this. Silver Surfer, Thanos. Again, we've got some uh, Kirby Crackle-esque stuff going on there. Just really kind of breaking up the picture. It's just, yeah, it's so well done. And then Black Cat, maybe? Man, that's kind of hard to tell. Do the Black Cat or uh, Batgirl or Batwoman? No, no, it's Black Cat. It's got to be Black Cat. Miles Morales doing the Todd Spidey spaghetti webbing. Oh, there you go. Is that Zemo? Yeah, I'm telling you, this is the way the webbing should look. Always. I mean, the way that McFarlane kind of established it in his run is the way that the webbing should always work. And then just do your own version. You can 
add more lines and, and, and ripples and, and ties and all this kind of stuff with it. Just make it look absolutely wicked. It's a character within it itself now in the Spider-Man mythos, the web. Awesome Venom there too. Oh, there we go. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of action. A lot of movement. A lot of movement. Energy. Crazy. Digging into like the speed lines, really showing the explosion. Just, you know, the debris blowing by Spider-Man there. I love art, guys. I absolutely love it. I love all, every every little line. That's why this channel, well, I guess the channel's not called that, but this series is called Appreciating Comic Book Art. Because I, I just, I appreciate the talent and time that it goes into all of this. The imagination to draw a cityscape like this, even a smaller one like this, you know, just the detail that goes into that. Throwing a silhouette out here just perfectly, just frames everything. Beautiful. Again, another painted uh, Daredevil there. And a face shot. Moon Knight. Still one of my favorite runs of David Finch ever, art-wise, was his run on Moon Knight. I still think that was some of his best work. I love the style he used. Uh, I think he was clicking with Mickey on inks. The colors were great. That's a badass uh, Ghost Rider, too. There we go. I think we've all seen this spawn out there. It's cool Dracula. A wicked looking bat. Look at that. Look at that bat. It's crazy. That's when you know you're having dr fun drawing. When you just you just pour your heart into everything. You don't just see a bat. You, you know, you could have done a bunch of stuff like this, which I do that. You know, drawing bats like that are fun. You draw if you want to draw like an army of bats or just a ton of bats in the background, you just hit the shape. You do a little bit of the McFarlane kind of feel with it. But this is when you're having fun. You're like, I'm going to go and draw this monstrous bat representing Dracula here and just go in and really detail the heck out of it. Spawn is great. It would be cool to see David Finch do a run on Spawn or any one of the titles they have. King Spawn, Spawn, even Gunslinger. I'd like to see Brett Booth move up to the regular Spawn title and take that over for a little while. Bring a guy like Finch on for a little bit. Certain artists are going to draw this character the way that they that he should be drawn. Is that Ascension? Nice. Hellboy? I'd love to see him go back and do an Ascension run. I think he said that, uh, I think Silvestri owns the rights to that. But it'd be awesome to see him just go back and re revive that character at Top Cow. Do another cool run on it, you know? Uh, this was a creator-owned title that Finch did back in the 90s. It was actually the first time I ever um, first time I ever was introduced to Finch was on this book. I saw him. I thought he kind of resembled Sylvester a little bit, and so it sucked me in right off the bat. And uh, I've been a fan of Finch's ever since. Uh, was this Dragon Rage? Jimmy Race's Dragon Rage cover for the first uh, Indiegogo campaign he did. I think Reyes actually inked this himself. You can probably find a video out that was out there somewhere on uh, Jimmy Race's channel. Well done. I think this might have been. I think he was saying Jimmy was saying uh, David's first Indiegogo cover. Red Sonia. Yeah. Yeah. Look at the detail on that axe. Of course the boobs, but the axe, and the boobs, but the axe. Look at that axe. It's all around. Man, inspiring stuff is a word I like to say lately. Inspiring stuff. Got some Judge Dread. Judge Dread. Dr 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 Invincible. Beat up on Omni Man. Little reverse rolls there. Oh, nice. I don't think I've ever seen this one. Darth Vader. That's a good one. 
Dig that. You got the Mandalorian. <laughs> got uh, Grogu. Almost forgot his name. Or Grogu. Looking all cute. Again, very cool with the, the clouds in the background. Adding the energy to a uh, heroic, you know, comic book strong, powerful pose there. Oh, man. I don't think I've seen this one either. Wow. Killed it on that Jason Voorhees. Look at that. <laughs> that is wicked. Nice job. Oh, that's great. Again, I love the, the blackout. Lightning in the background. Very mood setting. Got the splatter going on here. Very simple uh, ground that he's sta staying on. Surface. Oh, I like it. Skeletal. Yeah, this is well worth the investment. Can't remember how much we paid for this on Kickstarter, but there's the uh, full page there to the mini print that we got. I do not recognize this character. Somebody let me know who he is. Looks like a penciled version of the same character here. All right, getting close to the end, guys. Stick with me. Appreciate it. Been 21 minutes so far. Looks like a layout there. I like that he's got the Finch symbol. Is this an actual character? Or is that just a homage to, uh, to Finch? I don't know. Got some cool layouts here. I like this. It's really cool to see, like, the start and the finish, where you, you know, just how you're framing everything, loosely throwing in the, the body shapes, and then going in and actually getting the rendering done. It's supposed to all be Walking Dead stuff. Looks like we got cover layouts here on the bottom. And, uh, some finishes up top. And that's it. That is it. Goes through. Oh, here we go. It's a little bit of a. Oh, it says illustrations done by Eric Grove. Live during the Monday Night Draw. Oh, okay. I think he had a. Uh, had a dude join him on some of the streams doing, uh, doing work with him. That's cool that he threw that in there. What is this? Oh, special thanks. That is a big special thanks. That's cool, covering your, your all your boundaries there. I like it. Right. Okay, cool. Ends with the other Shadow Wolverine there. Yeah. That is cool. That is awesome, guys. That was a great purchase. It's going to go right up on my wall to the left of me. Well, you can't see me pointing right now. But if you're watching my live streams, you know, like, I have a wall behind me of all... Uh, I don't know if you call them my prize possessions, but they've got... All the art books and things I like to keep for motivation and inspiration when I'm drawing here at, at, at my drawing table. So this is going right up there. Uh, highly recommend you go out and find this if you can find it. I don't know if it's going to be in stores, if you can find it on eBay. Uh, but this was awesome. This was great. All right, guys. I appreciate you joining me tonight or today, whatever time it might be when you were viewing this. Uh, if you like this channel and you like this content, please sub. Hit the like button, hit the bell for notifications, become a member of the channel. We are growing the channel slow but steady. We are doing free art giveaways every four months. And also, I have a book called Reaper Destroyer. Live on Indiegogo right now. Here's the ash can. Go check it out. There's a link below. This is an action sci-fi thriller. And I've got some detail and a trailer to follow. So, appreciate you guys. I will talk to you all later. Peace. Hey everybody, before you go, did you know I have my own comic book called Reaper Destroyer on Indiegogo now? It's an action sci-fi adventure that captures everything about the dark heroes of the 90s that we love, but with a modern day twist. If you haven't yet, please consider backing today. There's a link in the description below, and I will talk to you all later.